Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, Trevor, the young buffalo, Berkeley. He is the undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Pinklin, Pinky Thomas. Round one. Burbick said he was going to come right after him. Thomas says he'll knock him out in six rounds. So let's see who's right, if either. One thing that is interesting is both these fighters are athletes of another caliber. Thomas was a track man and a football player. I tell you, Burb, I mean, uh, Pinkley Thomas has a very good right hand. And he proved that by stopping uh, Mike Weaver. Well, I tell you, those are some tough jabs that Thomas is throwing on Burbick. Well, you notice the consistency. Good right hand. Big Burbick. right hand. Consistency of the left jab of Pinklin Thomas. <laughs> that jab just right on the button. <laughs> good right hand. That was a good round for the champion. Direct over right hand and then a shorter right hand by Thomas. He didn't have leverage on the second one. You can see the damage he's done on Burbick's left eye. That's from the right hand. These guys are natural athletes. They can pretty much do whatever they want to do, from football to basketball, but they decide upon boxing. The reason that uh, that jab is working beautiful, the reason that Pickle is able to catch uh, Burbick with the right hand is because his left jab inside. This is Burbick's fight. He likes to rough it up inside. <laughs> I prefer to see Pinkley Thomas on outside throwing a left jab, doubling with a left jab. I hear he's designed to challenge the power, the physical strength of Trevor Burbick. As you can see, even inside, Thomas scores with just about every punch he throws. And of course, he did. That was a left hook. Tretna on his right eye and a good left hook, as you mentioned, Ray. You can see why Burbick is such a troubling fighter for so many fighters. He's, he's athletic, he's big, he's strong, he's awkward. He stays outside, then he jumps inside. He's not an easy fighter to look good against. Burbick continuing to trouble Pinklin Thomas. Burbick has a good jab. I mean, what he has to do is use his jab to offset the jab of Pinklin Thomas. Pretty soon, uh, pretty soon, the champion uh, may wish that Angelo Dundee was around. What a start of round five. You were beautiful triple left hooks by uh, Charles Burbick. Because this broad shoulder, that hook there appeared to have bothered Pinky. And another good one, but followed up with a great body shot by Thomas. Again, Both men effective there. Thomas standing straight up, so those left hooks by uh, Burbix will prove to be effective. When you fight this type of style, when you fight this pace, it's a matter of condition. And that was Thomas with about four punches, all to the face and all unanswered. So now Burbick needs to get on the ball and put some of his punches together. Good overhand right, but Burbick didn't take a backward step. And now Burbick with a right hand. Thomas right back. Burbick lunges at him. A lot of action. A lot of a lot of action, Barry, and a lot of punches, and a lot of wearing down. Because now it's just going to be an accumulation. Oh, a good left hand by Trevor Burbick. And the reason he's, well, the reason Thomas was hit by the left hook is because his hands are down. <laughs> and again, Thomas right back, a three-punch combination. Burbick comes back with a right hand. What a round. Well, you can hear from the crowd what that round was about. It's very rare to see big men punch each other the way we just saw in that round. Very, very rare. And now remember the sixth round, which we are in now, the round that Pinklin Thomas said he would knock out Trevor Burbick, and Burbick scores the first big punch of the sixth round. <laughs> the jab, it's so effective. Pinklin Thomas' jab, right hand. <laughs> And the jab continues to pepper the eye. You notice that uh, Pinklin Thomas, a little on we were here, just, just pretty much sticking that jab out. This round here, Barry, is just pretty much uh, trying to gain, catch the second win. Good left hand by Burbick, back Thomas up. I'm not doing too long. You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long. You've got to get inside. you got to get in close. Good right hand. And his left jab has been making that opening. 
available to him. Now we have a jabbing contest. Both fighters are just using their jab, trying to set each other up. Now here we have uh, the type of fighting that Trevor Burbick likes, inside fighting. Bobbing and weaving. Burbick's left hook has been catching uh, Thomas on the side of his head instead of on his jaw. Good right hand. Very good right hand Good by right Burbick. hand by Burbick. Good right hand once again by Burbick. The type of fight I like to see Pico Thomas in is when he's outside using that jab. Just beat this man to the punch. Tripling and doubling double his jab up. Burbick staying stay busy. <laughs> Burbick keeping him in close. Good left hand by Burbick. Big round for Trevor Burbick so far. Question I have in my mind is whether Pinklin Thomas is in the best shape he should be for a grueling fight like this. Well, to be honest with you, this is when you need a person like an Angelo Dundee to, to give you that motivation to uh, to really administer a cut, to give you that boost, to give you that, that resurgence of energy. And a tremendous three-punch combination by Burbick. Take a look at that devastating combination. A left, a short right, and a right back with a left. And from another angle. Thomas was looking down at the canvas then as though he was seeing something that he hadn't anticipated seeing in this fight. Not only the 10th round, but the possibility of losing his championship. And again, Ray, the thing that strikes me is that that jab, which was going right through the gloves of Burbick before, is being caught by Burbick now. <laughs> one but caught by the gloves, another one caught by the gloves. He was short with one a moment ago. That one was caught by the gloves. Right hand. Now that's a what's great gonna... body shot. <laughs> There's that hook again, Barry. And another. Here we go again. Another left hook. And Thomas still has not raised that right hand of his. When we talked to Trevor Burbick, he said, this is the first time I've ever had a good corner. And, Ray, I know that was something you talked to him about, what, three or four fights ago. Meanwhile, Burbick just taking the fight right to the champion. Left hand. You notice that there's not there's not a snap to uh, Thomas punches. No, all arm, all arm punches. punches. And look at the hook. And he's, Thomas is he's in ready trouble. To go. He is in serious trouble. Burbick right on top of him. His feet are coming together. And there's a lot of time left here. Less than two minutes. Burbick just banging away at the champion. Thomas is in serious trouble. Burbick coming. Of punches. Look at these guys. These guys are going to war. Three minutes left in this WBC championship. The first step toward the unification of the heavyweight title. <laughs> Thomas, two good jabs. Probably the two best jabs he's thrown in the last four or five rounds. Right hand by Burbick backs Thomas off. Combination by Burbick again. The right hand of Burbick has been getting through. And now we're going to get a good idea as to just how it all works as far as the judging in Las Vegas goes. We showed you a little bit of the inner workings, but we mentioned also we saw a rather strange decision in a Cruiserweight Championship fight a little bit earlier here. It's over, and it's in the hands of the judges. Judge Paul Smith scores 115-113. Just Fighter Bynum scores 115 113. Judge Art Lurie scores 115-114. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and new W.